Hey, 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 Taff, another out of this world story from our space. You don't think it could happen to you, but unfortunately, your partner has been unfaithful. So now you have to ask, how do we get over cheating? Being cheated on is a painful experience. Today in our space, we see just how mind-numbing and life-shattering it can get. Come join us on this bumpy road of yielding. Up first, he's as cold as ice. I'm really not sure if this is normal. I don't even know where to begin or if I'm in the right place. Like so many, this is my first post, but I've been reading every article out there with the words cheating spouse in it. I've been married 25 years this July and together 30. Like all of us, I caught her cheating with a coworker through texts, some familiar, but I also saw a text where she was so guilty and was about to tell me and I could see the pain and regret without a doubt. I was angry and had always said to her that cheating was a deal breaker without any need to talk about it. When I came home from work, she said she needed to talk with me, but I was not going to give her the satisfaction of telling me and come clean. Instead, all I said was, I know you're cheating on me. Get out of my house and all future conversations will be through a lawyer. Something else I read over and over again here. It was her house too, and I couldn't do that I know, but I wanted her gone. She begged and pleaded, but I went in the bathroom and locked the door. I was still angry, but calm. After a while, she left because she knows me and knows we can't talk now. I give her a lot of credit for disarming the situation and leaving. But here's what worries me the most. I love this woman more than anything in the world. I do, and I know I do, but I have been so calm and cold to her not even angry anymore in a very short period of time. It's like a business transaction for me to get this over and move on quick. I blocked her and refused to have contact. She has written letters, tried to come talk to me, asked me to sit down, you name it, but I refuse to acknowledge it. I delete what comes in electronically. I rip up what comes in physically and refuse other people carrying verbal messages. And I'm still not angry, and I know I still love her, but that I won't ever put myself in a situation like this with her again. I even know why I was angry, and it was because of the dead bedroom. That was all her, but she can cheat. But I'm over that part too. I'm more optimistic about the future than I've ever been. My fear now is something is wrong with me, or at some point I'm going to be overwhelmed with emotions that I can't function. Or did something break in me that will hurt anything in my future? I just don't know what to think. And back to keep telling myself to stop overthinking. My kids keep approaching and want me to talk with her as she keeps begging. They were angry at first with her, but are talking and getting back to normal, which I am so happy to hear. But I can't bring myself to talk with her because I don't care about the why. I don't need any more closure, and it's just wasting conversation. The end is inevitable, and I don't care if she feels better by telling me how much she loves me and it was just a mistake. I see that in every post here, and it won't do anything. I can't believe someone I can't trust, and this action leads me not to believe anything she would say, so I waste time on something that's over. But even as I'm typing this, I'm questioning why I'm so cold, and why would I not try? Am I giving up? We recovered from a dead bedroom once for to go back after a few months, and that's what I keep thinking now. We will recover, and in a few months, she will go back to the way it was. But this time, that's with another person. I don't know. I'm rambling, but the reality is, I know I love her in our life, but it feels that door is shut, and I'm marching down a path as fast as I can to get away from it, but the lack of emotions is starting to scare me. Has anyone else ever been here? Is this normal, or am I about to implode? OP, your reaction and feelings are totally and completely valid. It sounds like you've definitely pushed some things down and haven't yet dealt with certain dots and feelings. This is also normal. What you went to with traumatic. We have coping mechanisms that we use to try to manage traumatic situations. Some are healthy and some are not so healthy. It's not easy to confront your feelings and emotions, which is why we often shut down and become cold. Oftentimes, it's easier to feel nothing than to feel the hurt and pain of being betrayed by the people we love and trust the most. Infidelity is one of the more difficult challenges a marriage can face, but it doesn't always mean it's the end. As you work through the aftermath over time, it will become clear how to go forward so that the next phase of your life, together or apart, can begin. Have you been to a similar experience? How did you cope in that situation? Let us know in the comments below. Our answer comes from throwaway67831. Your feelings are 100% normal. I love this woman more than anything in the world. You loved one who was not who you thought. You didn't love a cheater. You loved a faithful woman. It's jarring, but she has revealed her true self to you, 
and your reaction is completely justified and quite admirable. You will not regret respecting yourself like this. The OP replies, Thank you for the kind words. Just reading that this is normal from a couple of comments and is the first time I got emotional from all of this. I was starting to feel like I was questioning my own sanity. Silent Cajun adds in, The numbness, lack of emotion, is a defense mechanism. You will inevitably experience the emotional roller coaster that we all did in your situation. But for now, your mind is keeping everything compartmentalized until you're ready to handle emotions. Numbness like that is a little scary, I know, but is normal for many people. I repeat, you are entirely normal, but you are in the worst emotional situation that you may ever be in in your life. So your responses may not feel normal because you've never been there before. For now, lean on your support system and some individual counseling, if only to allow a place to vent. And keep in mind, you don't have to make a long-term decision on what to do with your wife right at this moment. It is perfectly acceptable to decide to wait to make a decision on what to do with her. It's perfectly okay to give yourself some time and distance to give some perspective. Maybe you'll cut her out of your life. Maybe you won't. But giving yourself time to make the right decision for yourself is wise. Another thought from One Day at a Time Chicago. I think you are taking control of the situation, which is giving you confidence and power. Read the stages of grief. You could go in and out of various stages. Personally, I think you are doing the right thing. The trust is gone. One more thought before moving on from Sometimes I am lost. Your feelings are normal. She has been in your life a long time. You gave her your trust, loyalty, and your being. Well, she stepped out, and that is on her. She could have talked with you first and not cheated. Betrayal like this is hard to get over. I was the same way. It was deal breaker, and when I found out, well, I was out. Shut all my emotions off. They just died, and I was fine because I and they knew I would not stand for cheating. I am curious. She wanted to talk to you, but you intervened. Was she going to tell you and ask for forgiveness, or was she going to say she is done and wants out? The OP responds to this one, saying, She's not very technologically savvy and didn't realize all of us use the same Apple account. Her messages were also on the iPad. She told the fair partner that this was a one-time thing and that she felt horrible and was going to tell me. She also told him to never contact her again. I saw the messages that day about the meetup at lunch and then what happened after. I don't know about other conversations, but it was clearly a one-time event. But I'm not so gullible to think this is a one-time event, but I don't know about others. But that's the a-hole in me talking. But I honestly don't care if it's one or a hundred. To both have the same end result to me. And that's why I don't want to talk to her and learn more. Nothing but pain can come from it. Have you checked on your best friend lately? They might be getting real cozy with the one you love most, like in her next story. Ex-fiance cheated on me and my ex-best friend. So, to make a long story short, ex-fiance of six and a half years cheated on me with my best friend and business partner last August. Apparently, it had been happening for a while because her friends knew she had feelings for him and said nothing to me about it. Fast forward almost eight months, and not only has she cheated on him, but she cheated on him with a married man who has three kids. One was only days old. I made sure to let the right people know so that they could let the guy's wife know. The wife ended up catching him taxing back and forth, trying to get their story straight. So it made it even worse that they were trying to cover up her lie. I know being petty and getting revenge isn't very noble, but something about wrecking a family just gets under my skin so bad. I couldn't sleep when I found out she did that. I made sure to find a way to let the guy's wife know. Due to work-related reasons and dealing with social media, I couldn't be the one to do it. Am I the wrong for letting her know? Our first reaction comes from NC Deep Diver. You do the right thing. Petty is good when it comes to the cheer. I always wish cheaters and their fair partners nothing but the worst life can possibly offer them. Our next response comes from X Cat Rep. Abs uh, F been lootly not. OP, you did exactly the right thing. The betrayed spouse absolutely deserves to know. Once they have the information, it is up to them what to do with it. If you question yourself for seeing that the wife was informed, ask yourself this question. Wouldn't you have appreciated a heads up? Well then, OP, be well. The OP replied, When I found out the wife had kids, I feel like I had to find a way to let her know. It's one thing when it's between adults, but when you are breaking up a family, I take personal offense to it, coming from a broken home myself. Different management one wanted to add in, No, you did the right thing. How can people sink this low? How can they do this crap to friends? Sensitive Engineer 64 also adds in, Do you absolutely did the right thing? Are you still business partners? Sheesh, you have some terrible people in your past. 
Good riddance to the pair of them and all her friends that didn't tell you. You are a far better person than her. The OP replies, Luckily, there are six of us in the business and we will be buying him out within this year. But yeah, I knew they liked to party and make bad decisions. But this all came out of nowhere. I never expected it from both of them. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't expect her to cheat on him. But everyone gets their just desserts. Have you ever spent half your life with someone only to discover you don't know anything about them? We see this next in our last story. Strange relations for 15 years since we were 15. Married, now divorcing. Affair is a coffin nail. Disclaimer, this is my first post and I am unfortunately not a native speaker, so apologies for accidental mistakes. In case you are okay with this, lean back, this is going to be a hell of a story. This is the first time I try to journal half of my life. Feels surreal. Not sure this is the right subreddit to pour this over to though, but here I go with my story. So trivial, yet so painful. The intro. Me, 30 male, and my soon-to-be ex-wife, 30 female. Both are from a relatively small town in a small Slavic country. The one that made headlines back in 2020 and again in 22. It all started in 2005. We went to school together and were never actually considered a couple, but rather sweethearts based on the bond that existed between us back in those days. Her daddy issues date back to this very period as well. Long story short, dad made huge debts and disappeared. Single mom left behind, two kids, mobsters coming and searching for the missing dad literally every day. Guess this is where the trauma comes from. I will elaborate on the trauma and its impact below. We went to the university together in 2009, same uni, different departments, and I was hoping to convert this bond into a full-fledged relationship. But this is the point where it all started to go wrong. We have been on and off since that year, had some two to three days of wild sex, and then got split again for some 8 to 12 months. Theory of attraction could have explained a lot back in the day, but ironically enough, I discovered it three weeks ago. Ah. This is where I could have taken a different route. If only I knew. This all lasted till 2014. We both had relations with other people in between our brief rendezvous. But eventually, get drifted towards each other at the end of each cycle. Yeah, this never-ending, anxious, preoccupied, fearful, avoidant curse. 2014 was a year when it all began officially. She reached out to me, persuaded me that she did some soul-searching and was ready to give it a go. It took me almost a year to trust her completely, and eventually it worked, huh? We split twice in 2016 and 2017 for some four to five weeks, but never ceased communicating. She asked for a separation once. I slammed the door the second time. We both just got emotional. Nothing really serious, although this might have signified Jeter issues. This is where I could have taken a different route. If only I knew... Moved in together in 2017. Got married in 2019, right after we moved into our first own flat. 2019 was the year when I got sick. Low-grade fever for some six-plus months and other symptoms on ME-CFS, but eventually, I went through it at least for now. This was the point where her libido started to gradually fade away, as she later confessed. Not that easy to have sex with a sick man, but we were still in love. Remember I mentioned trauma? She was regularly struggling with some issues including chronic depression, eating disorder, separation issues, took care of her mom more than she should do, etc. She has been seeing therapists on a regular basis since 2017, has been taking SSRIs ever since, which eventually messed with our relations. And, as it often happens, she is extremely gifted, applied arts, design, etc., but never actually believing in herself. I was always there, as she herself confessed, made some minor mistakes, but never let her down and was extremely supporting. As the COVID started in 2020, we both admitted we grew extremely closer despite spending almost 100% of time together in a small flat. Her depression and eating disorder almost went into a remission, and we couldn't be happier. Spent lots of time together inside and outside. Dream job, I'm a game producer, and love of my life next to me with pandemic raging somewhere. Purchased and moved into our new flat in 2021. Renovated it together, had some minor semi-friendly arguments, but nothing serious. Tick-tock, D-Day approaching. End of 2021, beginning of 2022, is the time when I felt something was starting to go wrong. First the gut feeling. Then, sex becomes rare. Still not a dead bedroom though. She is drifting further emotionally. She starts to display major signs of uncertainty, whether we are headed in the right direction as a couple, etc, etc. Eventually, I dug into books and pushed myself to start working on this whole thing seriously while she was trying to figure out what's going in her head. K 
countdown begins. In March of 22, she asked for some time alone in a city in a country located nearby, some one-hour flight, and I willingly agree and purchase tickets for her. When she is back, it was never the same. Disengagement, absence of physical contact, etc. We still talk, though, discuss things and try to approach things differently. I already know fearful avoidance, are scared of long conversation, and the new tactics even have some minor effect. April of 2022. She asked for a brief separation, one month, to do some soul searching in the same city as before. I purchased tickets. She assures me she is willing to work and asks me to find a family counselor while she is away. Messages me every day, though I'm trying to stay pretty much distanced to give her some time with herself. Bam, D-Day is here. I felt something was wrong from the first day she was there. You know, liars are often exposed when they made up an excessive amount of details for their stories. This is why I felt something was wrong, and bam, I accidentally ran across the profile of her ex from probably 2012, Instagram recommended section, which was quite surprising, per se, because we shared a good laugh when the guy, some unemployed, pseudo-intellectual wannabe musician, reached out to her in 2015, while we are already in a serious relation. I did a brief search across the digital footprint, and guess what? She is staying with him while texting me and assuring she is working on herself. I messaged her today, telling her I am aware of this. She immediately denounces our marriage, oh, that paradigmatic avoidant coping, and says she wants a divorce as soon as she's back. Read, done sleeping with this guy. I do not object. And here I go, sitting in the flat we built together, full of stuff we shared together, and grieving. Moving out to my friend's flat tomorrow, since I don't want to spend any more time in our home. Obviously, I'm willing to fix this. But at the same time, it is pretty much obvious, despite all side factors like that, it is like a rebound from a crisis, which in turn emerged from the avoidant partner involving too much into relations. That the damage done is far beyond repairable. Time to move on, I guess. Thanks for reading this stream of consciousness to this point. You are a hero to have tolerated this. Any advice or support is appreciated. I am at the beginning of scrapping the past 15 years, half of my life actually, and putting all this crap together from the very beginning. First of all, OP, I'm so sorry you had to go through all of this. You don't deserve this. Second of all, it's very normal to have a good cry, or two or three, after a breakup. And when the breakup follows a long-term relationship, expect to need time to recover. Please know that this situation won't define you. Your life isn't over. Holding up in your flat, eating ice cream with the blinds closed, watching any random show streaming on your laptop, and showing no interest in answering your phone is a bad idea. While dealing with this new reality and learning how to get over being cheated on may be scary. Think of it as a chance for you to start over. Yes, it may be a different life, but there's a high possibility that things may turn out even better. Think of it this way. You don't want to waste any more time on people who don't love and respect you. Your whole life is ahead of you. Spend it with someone who can't get enough of you and sees their future in your eyes. A first response comes from Tertiary 78 Why would you want to fix this? It's been a 15-year disaster. You would be foolish to fix it. You need physical and emotional distance more than anything. Your soon-to-be ex is a broken human being you refuses to properly resolve her trauma. Instead, she's chosen to traumatize you. The more distance you put between her and yourself, the sooner you can realize happiness. Divorce at breakneck speed and recognize that this was never a healthy relationship and she has hurt you more than she ever put in work to heal herself. One final thought from Alien Ghost Wizard. Hey man, I am sorry. She doesn't love you. That sucks, but you are going to be okay. You have a friend that's willing to put you up and I'm sure other blessings. 15 years is a long time, but it's never a waste. Time never is. It makes you who you are, cracks your future responses. Keep cool through the divorce. Don't get mad or desperate. Don't try and make it work with her. You will only hurt more. You got this. You can do this. Thank you for joining us today in our space. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have feedback on today's content, please let us know in the comments below. See you next time.